starting with, like I said, this wonderful instrument, uh, there's a number of parts to it. Uh, starting at the top, we have the scroll. Um, then we have the individual pegs up here. These are the top part of what tension is your strings. Um, you've got the nut, which is the one of the three places that your strings actually transmit vibrations to the instrument from. Um, you've got your neck here. You've got your heel, which is this little nubbin here on the end. Then, of course, you've got your the body of the instrument, all this here. Uh, you've got your upper bouts, you've got your middle bouts, and then you've got your lower bouts. You have the fingerboard, which is this big ebony piece, which is what your fingers actually press this string down to. You've got your bridge, which is this part right here, which is your main focus for uh, transmitting your sound to your instrument. You've got your tailpiece, which is this one right down here. Some models have fine tuners, which are small screws basically that adjust the tension uh, past the bridge. Um, some of them have them, some of them don't. Most beginner instruments are going to have them because tuning with the pegs is rough to say the least. Um, and then the last major important thing you have down here is going to be your end pin. Um, this is going to be what sets your instrument's height in terms of playing um, when you actually start playing. Um, so all of this kind of works together um, to help put the instrument in a good position for you. And the basis of a good position is actually how and where you're sitting. Now with this, um, you're not going to want to be way back in your seat, you know, relaxing and lounging. Um, you're actually going to want to be forward on your seat. Um, the, the best way that I've found to kind of get that figured out is to stand up and then sit down uh, three or four times in fairly rapid succession because every time that you do, your body's going to get used to that motion, um, and that's going to put you in the correct position because you don't want to be, you don't want to be laid back. You you want to be actively engaged into the instrument. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to look for is you're going to want the heel, which is this little nubbin right back here. That heel is going to want to be about the center of your breastbone. Um, <clears throat> so. For me, that sits right about here. I've also got this peg uh, for the, it's actually for the C string, it's the lowest one on the player side, is usually about touching my neck. Um, and then I know that I've got the angle this way, about right when my knees are actually touching the back of the, uh, the points on the uh, middle bounce, on the C bounce. So once, <clears throat> It'll take a little bit of getting used to, it'll take a little bit of all that kind of stuff, um, but once you get used to setting it up, pulling it out of the case, whether you've got a hard case or a soft case, um, and then going through and running it that way, uh, just setting it up, putting your pin back in, putting everything away, you'll, you'll get fairly quick at um, adjusting to it. Now, <clears throat> moving forward from there, um, you do have uh, something else that is going to be very, very important on playing this instrument. You can play a pizzicato, which is just plucking individual strings, um, but the bow is going to be the major driver of this instrument. Um, and then you've got a couple different parts on this. You've got the tip, obviously. Uh, underneath is going to be the ivory. Uh, you've got the stick, which is the well, stick-looking thing. Uh, you've got horsehair down here that actually contacts your strings. Just as a heads up, you don't ever want to directly touch the horsehair with your hands because it can transfer oils from your hands to the uh, to the horsehair and it'll actually lead to the degradation and the snapping of the horsehair a lot faster than normal. Some of them have a silver winding here. Some of them also have a grip. There are some that this is all one rubber piece, especially on uh, beginner grade instruments. Then you've got your frog, which is going to be this part right here, which travels up and down the stick which adjusts the tension of your horsehair. And then you've got your eyelet or the screw, which is going to be what you turn to pull the frog back to make this tension. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do for cello is you're gonna to wanna to tighten this just enough to where obviously you don't wanna to touch it, but you should be able to just barely fit your pinky finger through in between the stick and the horsehair. You don't want it over tight. You definitely don't want it straight because when you look down it, you can actually see a bit of a camber there it, it curves about like that. Obviously, I'm over exaggerating, but um, that is what gives you the rebound ability there. Um, old bows, uh, Baroque bows, uh, actually curved the other direction, but you couldn't get nearly as much tension into them. 
and um, with more tension you can play faster because it doesn't bend over the string quite as much. Um, you can also get some other different effects. And you know, The history of these instruments um, is a very, very long one. There's been a lot of development going on um, over the couple hundred years that this has been a distinct extant instrument. The history on these things is fascinating. But, moving forward, so we've got the cello, we've got the individual pieces, we've got the bow, the individual pieces. Uh, there's a couple other things that you're going to want to pick up uh, as you start to play um, that are going to be very important. One of them is going to be rosin. Um, this one is uh, mid-grade that I personally use. Uh, it's a Gustave Bernadelle, and it's just a... Rosin is basically glorified tree sap. Um, and what it does is you run your tensioned bow, so we've already got a tension, you run your tension bow over the top of it, and it is a sticky substance, but not in the, like, glue kind of way. It's like a dry, it, it's, a, it's a dry powder once it comes off um, onto your bow that increases friction, um, and that is going to be what allows your instrument uh, be it violin, viola, cello, bass, whatever, um, to actually grip the, the horsehair on the bow to grip the string and allow you to make noise um, that hopefully comes out as music. Even after playing as long as I have, it doesn't always come out as music. Um, another important thing, this one is just a metronome, uh, but Korg, which is, this brand also makes um, tuners. I highly recommend a separate tuner. You can use the ones on your phone, but they're not specifically geared towards it. You, you can use your phone for a lot of this, um, and if you're starting out, that's definitely a, a passable usage. Uh, but I would highly recommend a separate one that is dedicated, uh, because they actually have uh, line-in jacks that allow you to plug in like a clip-on microphone uh, so that you can actually tune your instrument in the middle of a you know symphony rehearsal or whatever it happens to be. Um, <clears throat> the other side of it is being a metronome that is going to allow you to keep time uh, basically, it provides a steady beat, uh, a steady pulse <clears throat> that you can set the timing on, and it allows you to work through, when we get into it a little more, it allows you to work through passages um, a little bit faster than just playing it over and over and over again. You can work through a specific chunk that is giving you a hard time at a reduced speed, and then gradually increase the speed to be able to get better. Um, <clears throat> and the other side of it is, there are parts in some of the pieces that you really need to learn at a lower tempo before you speed them up, um, and this will drastically help you do that. Um, also, just starting out, I would highly recommend one of these. This is a um, practice mute, so it goes over the bridge and drastically reduces how much sound comes out of the instrument. Um, normally, like... Okay, so, standard. Okay, so um, if you have roommates, if you have parents, if you have those kind of things, if you're needing to practice without, you know, being full volume, highly recommend them. Um, they're, they're a definite practice aid.